broad spectrum knowledge of engineering. Um, they will be able to tell you a little bit about their experience and answer some questions uh, for you. Um, I'm going to have everybody introduce themselves here in a minute. Before we do that, I think we're going to go ahead and launch a poll. We would like you to complete uh, the poll for us. Um, it has basic questions about your the major that you intend to go into. If you're not quite sure that's okay, just kind of put the, the major you think that you're most interested in. Um, there are kind of two sections on the question. So section one has uh, your first 10 engineering majors in alphabetical order, and then uh, section two, uh, the, the next several. So I'm gonna give, um, I'm gonna leave this up for about uh, a couple of minutes um, for you to go ahead and complete the poll. Um, I think while we have the poll going on, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have some of the people who are joining us um, introduce themselves. So I'm gonna start with uh, Jenny Strickland, who is uh, actually new to our Office of Professional Practice this week. Um, but if you're going to join the co-op program, you're going to be working a lot with Jenny. So I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, guys. My name is Jenny Strickland. I am so excited to get to meet you all and work with you. That is my son crying in the background. <laughs> He's fine. But um, I am a graduate of Purdue myself, so I've got a lot of fun experience to be able to share and hear all of the great things that you all can do too. Thanks. Um, next, I'll go to uh, Kylie. Hi guys, my name is Kylie Rogers. I'm currently a senior in chemical engineering and I just completed a five session co-op rotation with Vantage OEO Chemicals. Um, so you can ask me about my experience there. Uh, that's about it. Okay, uh, next we have Alex. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Dobbins. Uh, I'm a fourth year chemical engineering student. I'm currently in my fourth co-op rotation with um, Vantage Performance Materials. Um, so similar company to Kylie, um, same parent company. And I'm also a chemical engineering major. Next we have Ritika. Hi everyone, I'm Ritika. I'm a second year in chemical engineering and I'm also doing a five-term co-op with Procter & Gamble. And we have Mylan. Hi, I'm Mylan. I am a junior in materials science and engineering and I'm doing a five-term co-op with Rolls-Royce aerospace, so I've completed four out of five rotations. Very good. Next is Austin. Hi, I'm Austin Williams. I'm a senior in aerospace engineering, and I've completed a three-term co-op with Gulfstream Aerospace. Next, we have Alyssa. Hi everyone, I'm Alyssa. I'm a junior in chemical engineering. I just finished up three terms at Sabic. And we have Izzy. Hi, my name is Izzy. I'm a third year student in chemical engineering and I just completed two of my five terms with Lubrizol. Mm -hmm. um, I'm leaving the, just so, so you know, uh, we still have people I think who haven't uh, submitted to the poll. So to the best of your knowledge, if you can just put in some information about uh, what um, major that you think that you might want to go into, uh, we're going to use this for breakout rooms later. So if you haven't entered that, please go ahead and do. I'm probably going to end that poll in another minute. Um, next, we have Michael. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Gill. I'm a sophomore in civil engineering, and I've completed one out of five sessions with Jacobs Engineering. Then we have Tyler. Hi everyone, my name is Tyler. Uh, I'm a senior in mechanical engineering and I just finished my third term at Eastman Chemical Company. Cool. Then we have Harrison. Hi, I'm Harrison Lippi. I'm a senior in chemical engineering and I've done five terms with Sabic down in uh, near Evansville, Indiana. Okay. Next we have Carl. Hi, my name is Carl Russell. I'm a third year biomedical engineering major, and I've completed my second uh, rotation out of three with Cook Medical down in Bloomington. Very cool. Then we have Ellen. Hi, everyone. I'm Ellen. Um, I'm a junior in mechanical engineering. I completed two co op rotations with ExxonMobil, uh, then did an internship with Boeing, and I'll be um, entering a new co op session with Honda. Um, 
Awesome. And finally, Jin He. Um, hi, this is Jen He. I'm a senior studying mechanical engineering and then finished three co-op rotations with Adminiat and had my uh, another internship session this past summer. And I think maybe possibly one more Dalton. I'm not sure if Dalton's arrived yet. Maybe not. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to end uh, the poll. Um, and so I think we're sharing the results so you can see what we have here uh, in terms of uh, folks. Um, so we have a good representation of different majors here tonight. So that's great. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Just a second. And here we go. So we're going to talk about our our Office of Professional Practice. Uh, first off, Office of Professional Practice has been around here on campus for about uh, 60 years uh, with the main focus being running of co-op programs. Right now we're located in Powder Hall, uh, room 114. Uh, when it's available, when the new building's up, the gateway building, which you'll see that's uh, being built uh, right now, right next to Potter Hall, we'll actually be moving to those offices. So our office runs a variety of experiential learning programs. Uh, Co-op being the, the biggest program that we run, serving the most students. Um, we run some programs during the junior year called Internships for Indiana with smaller startup companies. We have a interesting program that is kind of brand new starting last year, which is what we call the Milestones program. That is a technical skills development. So you have uh, several different modules that you can take. They're extracurricular courses. Usually we offer during the evening um, about 15 hours to complete a module. You can get technical skills trainings and things like uh, Python, 3D printing, CAD, uh, designing smartwatches, uh, building biomedical devices. So we have a whole range of different milestones that you can, you can um, uh, choose from. And the goal for those milestones is really to enhance what you're doing in the co-op program, being able to come back and add some technical skills that maybe you're not getting in the classroom, maybe you're not getting on the work site, something to really help you become what we, we think as, of as the super student. And then we do offer some global opportunities, uh, the GEAR program being one that we've talked about uh, before in engineering your major sessions. That is a, our, our global engineering training program, one in which you actually can incorporate uh, co-op into. So moving on, uh, our office is uh, working with 300 plus employers uh, from around the globe. These include employers that are, that are small, major global corporations, um, as well as uh, smaller companies. Here are some of the companies that we work with, but um, from, our, from our website, which you'll find at opp.purdue.edu, you can actually get a full listing of all of the different companies uh, that we work with. Um, in general, as we work with these companies, we're building opportunities with the companies for them to help train students. So they're building programs for which they want to work with students over a longer period of time. They want to work with that student multiple times. And each time the student comes back to that company, they get more experience. So that brings us into what is co-op. Uh, co-op's an integrated work plan that alternates between study semesters and summers of on-campus academic study and paid work rotations with an industry partner. Um, in this program, typically takes you five years to graduate. It does not add any additional cost uh, to your tuition. Uh, when you're working during a semester, you do not pay tuition and fees to Purdue. In fact, you get paid uh, a pretty good rate, which we'll show you in, in a few minutes. Um, when you exit the program, you will have a minimum of one year full-time work experience and up to about 20 months uh, if you do one of our longer term programs. So it is substantial work experience. Uh, the work experience generally is progressive so that each time that you're going back to the company, you're getting uh, additional experience, um, harder, more challenging tasks and responsibilities. 
what do we see as the advantages of the program? If you complete the program, you earn a co-op certificate upon graduation. So that is something in addition to your academic degree. Um, you're gonna get greater depth of experience okay. with, with increasing responsibility throughout uh, your time in the program. So this is the key factor that I think makes co-op a lot different than an internship program. Um, the companies that work in the co-op program are dedicated to you and your student development. So they're looking to help train you. They might hire you right out of your first year and you might not have much academic experience, much work experience, and that's okay with them. They're wanting to, to work with you. They're wanting to train you. They're, they're forgiving in the fact that they don't think that you're gonna know everything coming in, but their goal is the next time that you come back to them, they're gonna be able to give you more and more work and increase your skills as, a, as an engineer. Um, you become an integrated employee for, for the company. Um, some of the opportunities vary, but in, in some cases you might go back and work with same people in the same units who are really depending on you. They're looking at you more as a full-time uh, person, really a member of the team. Um, and what we're finding from students who complete the program, they get more interviews, about 2.5 more, or actually no, it's about five times more interviews after after the program when they're, when they're a senior and about 2.5 more job offers. So um, one thing that happens is the co-op employers, about 80% of them are gonna offer students a full-time job after they graduate. Um, about 50% of the students take that full-time offer because they're getting a lot of other opportunities from other, um, from other companies. And if you think about it, co-op is really the program at which you're gonna get the most work experience. You could do three summer internships and that's gonna to total up to about nine months of work experience and no other program do you get a year or more of work experience. And then also, if you think about it, you if you go back to that company after you have worked with them, you're gonna experience faster career growth within the company. They're already gonna know you. You're already gonna know lots of people within the organization. You're gonna know their culture. You're gonna know how to get ahead and that's gonna propel you in your, in your career. So we'll get into just the logistics of how it looks. We have a couple of different plans. The first that I think most of you here tonight are interested in as first year engineering students is the five session co-op plan. This is a plan that allows you to get the most work experience as well as it helps you get work experience right after you finish your first year. The nice thing about this is we're gonna, we're gonna have opportunities for recruitment, co-op recruitment starting in January. And the companies who are looking for students in five session co-ops are looking for students who are freshmen. So um, you're not gonna have to compete against sophomores or juniors for positions. That is a, is a benefit for you. You can see that there's a couple of different plans. Most of the students in a five session co-op plan either do their first ro work rotation in the summer or in the fall. A lot of companies have a plan to hire at least two co-op students so that they can have a co-op student on all year all year long so they can rotate those students back and forth. Uh, the second plan that I'll show is the three session co-op. This is something that a student would start uh, after their second year primarily. Um, the reason for this program has to do with creating more co-op opportunities for you. Um, there are some companies out there who will say, gee, maybe we're not um, so comfortable having something to do for a student right out of their first year. Um, but we would really love to have a rotational program with a student where we can build their career as long as they had some more academic experience. So the three session co-op gives you some more opportunities. What I recommend for students, if you're interested in it, definitely come out this year, look for five session co-op programs. If you get offered something you like, take it. If you get offered some things that you're not so sure about, um, maybe you can come back the following year and look for, for three session. Or if you don't get offered anything at all, which... Um, has not really been the case. Most students who have come out for co-op in, in previous years have been able to, to obtain them, but this gives you some other, other options. Um, the other plan that creates some more flexibility that more and more of our companies uh, are also interested in integrating in is what we call the flex co-op plan. So this plan allows you to start like you were going into a five session co-op. You commit to two rotations with the company if you like that company, you continue on with that company for one, two, three more. Uh, uh, you, if you do at least three with that same company, you should get a co-op certificate. If you decide after that too that you wanna switch companies and try something else, 
then you got to do at least two rotations with another company. So this gives you some flexibility, some opportunity to check out what different companies may have to offer. Thus far, since we initiated the Flex Co-op program, I'll let you know that um, we've actually had very few students change companies. Um, a lot of students have been very happy with their, with their companies and those companies try to uh, keep those students on board. Um, here's where we're talking about how much money you can make. So it is a substantial amount of money that students can make in their co-op. What we're generally telling companies is, you know, a student on the five session co-op is making close to 60% of what, uh, what a engineer right out of college would make. And that you see that rate goes up on each, each session. Same thing with the three session co-op programs as well. So, um, in total, you're making anywhere between fifty and eighty thousand dollars from from the co-op program. Uh, the other interesting thing is when you're in a co-op program, all the money you make it doesn't count towards your family's uh, expected earnings in the FAFSA. So, um, if you were to do an internship where you didn't register for for a course like you would in a co-op. Um, that money would count against that expected earnings in a co-op since it's an academic program, it does not count against it. So this will not impact any financial aid or, or anything like that as well. Um, here are some of the requirements real quickly for the co-op. We require at least a minimum GPA of 2.6 for students in the program. Um, I would say that a lot of companies uh, input their own um, GPA requirements. Uh, a consistent one that many will have is 3.0. So um, do it in this your first semester. Um, you would be benefited if you, you finish this semester out well. Um, anywhere over 3.0 should make you pretty highly eligible for, for co-op opportunities. When you do get a co-op, you will register for a course um, every time that you do that co-op session. So that means that the, the experience is documented on your transcript. But additionally, that course uh, helps you learn more from your experience. You have to reflect upon the experience. You have to write a work report. You have to get a supervisor evaluation and evaluate it yourself. That supervisor evaluation is pretty important because it's gonna show you what types of things that you might need to, to work on. Um, and hopefully you can take to heart those things when you come back to campus and improve upon those things that your company is giving you feedback upon. And then you come back and you're an even better employee with them. So that co-op course is something that you take e each time uh, with the co-op program. Um, and finally, uh, how do we get involved? So after this semester in December, if you finished with a 2.6 GPA or higher, um, by early Janu January, you're going to be receiving notification from our office inviting you to the co-op call out, which we're having virtually on January 21st. Um, we'll be telling you how to log into our co-op opportunity data database. So if you go to just our opp.purdue.edu, you'll find a, a database where you'll do your two-factor student login. Uh, you can create a profile there. You can uh, go into your account and check the box that says you're interested in the co-op program. So many of you here right now, if you're interested, I would tell you to go in there, check that box, let us know that you're interested in it. You can upload your resume in that. So then when companies are, are coming and asking and looking for students interested in co-ops, you can be part of resume books that go out to those. So we're going to, our, our goal is to try to help you connect with co-op opportunities. We're going to have some various information sessions that we're having with many of our co-op companies the week of uh, February 8th. So we'll be inviting students to those. Those will be opportunities to learn more specifically about those companies and perhaps get your resumes out to those companies. And then this year we'll have a virtual uh, career fair the week of the 15th with just our co-op companies. So this will be opportunities for you then to, uh, to talk with co-op companies. Um, some of them you'll be able to schedule interviews with uh, prior to even the career fair. So we're going to try to help you get connected and help you get interviews with co-op uh, companies. And I think you'll hear from many of our students who went through the process. They talked to maybe several co-op companies in, in, some interest, in some instances. Maybe some of them got several co-op offers that they, were, that they were looking for. But I think that you'll find that a lot of students uh, found some success in getting interviews through, through our co-op uh, days program. Um, 
And so then the, the final thing, just our office, as I said, we're located in Potter Hall of Engineering, uh, pro practice at purdue.edu. If you wanna send our office questions about the co-op program, um, you can call us 494-7430. Um, I'm actually in the office most days in Potter 114 and Jenny is now as well. So um, if you wanna stop by and ask us questions, that's a good opportunity too. Um, we also, uh, I'm going to stop, stop sharing. Um, we also have a lot of great opportunities. And so tonight you'll have an opportunity to talk to some of our co-op students. And I think that this will be a good opportunity to make some contacts, connections, uh, get some information. I see that Dalton's here. I'm going to have Dalton introduce himself real quick before we go to breakout sessions. Hi, everyone. My name is Dalton. I'm part, I'm the, uh, Vice President of PPA. Uh, sorry, I joined late. Had some t uh, technical difficulties on my desktop, but yeah, I'm here now. All right. Hi, everyone. Sounds good. And so with that, I think I'm going to have Alyssa uh, send us to our breakout rooms. Yeah, there's a little bit of technical difficulties. So I can't see who put what, but I'm going to open the breakout rooms now, and all of the PPA members will be assigned to theirs, but they're all named with their name and then their major after, so you can join them freely. You guys should all be able to pick the room you want, but just remember that if you're doing or thinking of aerospace or mechanical, we only have two of each of those here, so it may be more difficult to get your questions answered. And we all know about the co-op program, so if they're not major specific, maybe think about joining one of the rooms that's less full. Maybe, maybe Alyssa, maybe instead of, maybe instead of doing that, maybe we should just have people randomly assigned. I think people can probably talk about their experiences and ask questions. What do you think? I can do that for the second one. Okay. We yeah, no, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and assign and then we can join the one that you feel comfortable joining. Yeah. It may not be perfect fit, but everybody can answer questions. Yeah. So, Joe, I figured we could do this one where they, because I can still move them around. Mm -hmm. But. We can do the random for the second one. Okay. It will just like take me a second since I'll have to assign the PPA people or else they'll also be randomly assigned. Mm -hmm. If you're having trouble joining a breakout room, just send me a private chat and I can put you in the one you want if you say the major. This is you have them assigned? I'm working on it.
Thank right. you. Yeah. We should have everyone back in, is all I was going to say. Okay. Yeah. All right, everybody. Uh, it's, uh, hope you had a good opportunity to learn a little bit about the co-op program, ask some questions to some uh, folks going through the program. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and um, put up the um, QR code uh, so you can gain credit for, for coming to the meeting. Uh, so here we go. Joe, there yeah. is one question. Um, okay. Is anyone, any of like the PPA students able to talk about the Tripoli co-op program or the EC? Maybe Alex might know something about the EC. Are they specific questions or, or no? Just talking about the opportunities available in those two engineerings. Yeah, so um, from what I know, Triple E is, um, it can really work in almost every industry. Uh, there are opportunities for sort of environmental engineers. It's not, not necessarily a lot of companies are hiring those. So it's not like a, a company would hire three or four different co-op students for this. It might be like a, a one one time thing, but I do know in Tripoli, they have a very good, um, so what we didn't mention is that each uh, co-op program has a specific co-op coordinator. So a faculty member, a person who helps with, uh, with co-op. Um, and so um, Tripoli has a very good co-op coordinator who's worked in, in the industry as a Tripoli for, for quite some time. So she's very good at helping students kind of connect to different companies. As far as ECE goes, I would say almost every company, well, maybe not our chemical companies as much, but even some, but almost every other company, every other industry is hiring ECE students. ECE students are probably some of the most sought after for, for co-op programs. So you're not going to have a, a ton of problems. You're going to find opportunities in, in aerospace and automotive and electronics. Um, um, we started to work with like Apple, for example, who's doing like um, some different co-ops later, later on. So there are, there are really good opportunities for, for ECE. Hey, Joe, could I um, address one of the questions that popped yeah. up in chat? Yeah, yeah. so uh, Surya asked, is it possible to get a call from a company that's not listed on the website? Uh, yeah, it is. Um, like, I, I was actually telling the people in my breakout room, yeah, you don't have to, you know, just follow what Purdue does uh, in terms of, like, co-op career fairs and whatnot. Uh, to get a co-op if you are proactive enough what you'll notice is that throughout the fall and like just pretty much throughout the year in general uh, a lot of companies will put up listings for internships or co-ops and they may not be listed uh, on purdue there's a pretty good chance they won't be listed on purdue because i know purdue only really uh, lists a very limited number of uh, internships or co-ops but I, I i do know a lot of people who have gotten their co-ops or, or you know internships uh, just by um, really like uh, being proactive, looking on their own and applying and uh, getting interviews. But yeah, it doesn't have to be possible. Like, it doesn't ha just have to be through Purdue or the OPP website. Yeah, and to, to add to that, so um, our professional practice is the main recruitment fair for co-op. However, companies are looking for co-op students. They, they come to IR and they post opportunities and looking for for students there. They come to the Spring Expo, which is another big career fair that's going to go on during the spring, looking for co-op students. They might come to um, like civil engineering, for example, has a civil engineering specific career fair and companies are, are uh, hiring co-op students there. So there's many ways to go and get co-ops. You may find a co-op opportunity with a company who maybe they're not on our list and that's okay. Come into our office, come to your co-op coordinator, uh, let them know that you got that offer. And uh, a lot of times we'll go ahead and talk to that company and qualify them in our system. And it'd be great for, for you to help us uh, create more steady co-op companies hiring students from Purdue. So that, that's definitely an opportunity. There's a question about students doing co-op and then continue to do the four plus one at Purdue. I think the four plus one is like the master's at the end. Not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, you can still do that as a co-op student, but it'd probably be a five plus one since the co-op program normally adds that year to your graduation date. 
And then yeah. are companies specific to five term or three term? There are, uh, there are many companies who don't really care. They'll go out and they'll hire five terms or three terms. Um, usually, usually those who hire five terms are also hiring three terms for sure. There are some that will not hire five terms and only hire three terms just because those companies are looking for students who have uh, more academic background before they start. Right, and if you go like, you know, um, if you go to the actual like uh, professional practice career fair that OPP hosts, um, typically when you get the list of companies that are coming, you will see like, they, they will list out which, um, which uh, I guess term uh, co-ops they're hiring for. Like some, again, people have been saying some companies only will hire five terms only. Some people will only hire three, some will go for both, but it really depends on company. So keep an eye out for those. I see another question about when you're applying, do you apply for a company that will tell you where you are working or do you apply for a position with a set location? And I think maybe you guys have experience with it, but I feel that that's variable. It really is. Um, for me personally, the, the company I work has places all over the country and they typically start you off at one place because that's their like pilot plant and headquarters, but then it's basically a free for all. So I've been to Ohio, I went to Montana this past summer, I'm going to Texas in January. And so I have, I'm fortunate enough to be able to go anywhere I want, but each company does it differently, but there are always opportunities to travel outside of Indiana. I don't know if any of you guys have done that, but did anyone do a semester abroad and a co-op? I know that it's definitely possible. So I'm also organizing uh, the gear program, for example. And so we have gear students who also do the co-op program. So those students are also integrating foreign language, international internship, uh, and co-op together. Sometimes the co-op companies, we have uh, a certain number of these who have a set plan to send students abroad for one of their rotations, and they might pair that international rotation with with the study abroad. So they go to the country, do the study abroad, and then do the, the co-op rotation there. Um, sometimes there are students I've known who may have needed to do, they were in a five-term co-op program, for example, and maybe the company was flexible with them and said, okay, you can, you if you really want to study abroad, you can get off this term and you can go ahead and, and do the do the study abroad session. So there are options to do to do study abroad. Of course, also uh, summer programs are pretty common. I think uh, I've known a good deal of co-op students who have done short-term study programs. Um, additionally, we've also had some summer research programs abroad, which are full summers where you can get six to nine credits uh, uh, of coursework abroad just doing research at a partner institution. So that's oppor opportunity as well. I saw in the chat too, um, there was a question on asking for where to go for more in-person information. So I'll just repeat what was shared earlier, that pro practice at purdue.edu email. Feel free to just send an email there saying you'd love to have an in-person meeting and I can definitely help get you set up and answer whatever questions you have. Um, there's a good question about how would dorm housing on campus work with alternating work study terms? Anybody have some tips and advice on that? Uh, yeah. I do. I, oh, sorry. I'll, I'll let Izzy go first then. Oh, okay. Well, I actually did return to on campus housing my spring semester, so back in January. And so essentially, there's like in like October, they give you like this email. They said you could apply for registration. And then it's like your freshman year where you put your preferred dorm, your preferred dorm type, and then like your roommate preferences. And they kind of put a random like switch up. Um, and if you don't like your room, you can email them to ask for request to change, which is possible, but it's very much making sure they have the availability, but it is possible to get back on campus. And like Alex said, we do have an Excel spreadsheet that talks about subleases available if you want to live off campus. That's always around because people are constantly coming on and off for our school. Right, yeah, and like, if, if you want to get a little bit into like the details of how that works. So if you say, if, if you sign a full year housing contract in the fall and you go there in the fall, but you have a co-op in the spring, Co-op is listed as one of the very few like legitimate reasons to be able to break that year long housing contract. So, you know, just, just let them know, they'll ask you and they will 
uh, allow you to leave your uh, campus housing in the spring and you know leave the contract without any kind of penalties whatsoever. If if it's flipped, however, like say you have a co-op in the fall and you want to return to Purdue in the spring, it, again, like as you said, it is entirely possible to uh, sign up for that semester-long housing contract and uh, go back to live in the dorms uh, for for that that semester. Uh, someone asked, can you do co-op program and be an RA for the university, which I think might be a little bit more difficult. I, I think I've known students who have maybe done this their senior year when they've back for a full year, um, but I don't know if anybody else has thoughts on that. I actually know a student or friend who uh, finished the three session rotation and then on his senior year, he became the RA. And also another, another, I also know another friend, he uh, started his RA position in August and then, but then in the fall semester, he received a co-op offer and um, because his first session started in spring semester, he had to um, quit his RA position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I think normally a full year, but uh, a lot of the co-op programs are scheduled as such that um, you complete the co-op so that you're here for the last two semesters so that that senior year could be a possibility. Uh, question about working with the same employer. Um, that is, uh, we have, uh, it, it's most common to do that. So in our three and our five session, but our flex option does allow you to switch. Yeah, so, so good. And one thing I think that we didn't mention is many of the students that you see here uh, tonight are uh, in our PPA, our Professional Practice Ambassadors, which is a club and an organization that um, a lot of our co-op students join. Uh, they're helping each other out. They're giving support. They're mentoring uh, younger students. They're helping each other with, with this question of on-campus housing and things like this. Um, maybe Ellen or Lissa, Dalton, any of you guys really, I think, could, could um, talk a little bit more about your experience in the organization. Yeah, I can talk about it. Um, so I didn't introduce myself this way, but I'm president of PPA this year. Um, and it's a really fun organization. I think one thing I was scared of when going on my co-op was leaving my friends behind and then leaving for a semester and coming back. But one, my friends were still here. Um, and two, I joined PPA and everybody in PPA is on co-op, um, on and off co-op. So one, it's really fun because you get to kind of talk about your shared experiences um, and you get to volunteer at events like this. You get to mentor um, freshmen like you guys um, through kind of the co-op program. And then um, we also just do like social events and there's a scholarship and it's all kinds of stuff. So um, it's kind of fun and you're a part of like this little co-op community. So um, it's, a, it's a fun part of, of co-op. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, building off what Ellen was saying before. So I, jo I first joined uh, PPA after my first rotation out of uh, the five I was supposed to do. And I've so far I've been a part of PPA for like, it's got to be th at least four semesters now. And each each year, you know, there's a, each year we, we elect a new um, executive board. So it's always being, uh, it's always sort of like new, fresh leadership every year. And uh, every year, you know, the, the, they always have awesome ideas for how to restructure the club internally, how to get um, co-ops from all majors and all walks of life together uh, under one roof and, you know, helping each other out, becoming friends. I've actually met a pretty good number of uh, friends here at Purdue who are co-ops uh, through PPA because it is such a tight-knit, very close community. And... It's kind of it's kind of cool to, you know, initially join as a like sophomore or junior, meet a lot of older uh, co-ops who've gone through the college experience work and kind of help you out with that perspective. And as you go through your co-op, go through your uh, college career here at Purdue, you kind of become that older mentor figure for the newer co-ops and you get to meet a very wide variety of people from, again, all majors, all walks of life. So it, it's been a very rewarding experience. And like, again, like Ellen, I was, there was that worry of like ha having to leave for a few semesters and not having constant contact with the group of friends I'd made in freshman year. But, you know, 
that did uh, eventually come to pass, but it does PPA and co-op did allow me to meet a lot more people than I would have uh, met and become friends with had I not done co-op and just stayed um, in my uh, original graduating year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so I think that brings us right to eight o'clock. Um, I think we have to, to let you guys go, but if you have additional questions, feel free to email us at that pro practice, stop by our office, um, feel free to, to send us emails and get in touch at any time. Um, and we'll hopefully be sending you all, you'll all uh, meet the, the required GPA and we'll hopefully be sending you all the invites to our co 